Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. As always, if it's your first time here, then it is good to see you and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, welcome to another one of our weekend videos. <laughs> uh, in these videos, as those of you who follow the channel will already know, every weekend we normally upload on a Saturday and we look at all things Airsoft, gear, replica reviews, tech, and everything in between in our great sport and hobby that is Airsoft. And today, as you can probably tell from my vinyl gloves, <laughs> we're gonna be doing kind of a tech video. Now, as well as the weekend videos, I always upload a video every midweek, and that's normally on a Wednesday. Those videos are normally gameplay oriented. Uh, if I haven't been to a game that particular week, then the video will normally be another one of these studio videos or we might be up in my command center as I call it and have a look at some of my gear. Uh, but today we're, we're doing a kind of tech video. Now in this video we're going to look at basic tips and tricks and hints and ideas to carry across to your gas blowback pistols. Uh, this specifically relates to gas blowback pistols could be used and related to non-blowback, some of the tips as well. Um, the only reason this video has come about really is a very common thing I get on my home site at Tazball Airsoft, specifically from newer or younger players that are just getting into the, the hobby, the sport, and they've maybe bought their first pistol because let's be honest, gas blowback pistols are awesome. <laughs> um, you know, they, they usually have a lot of questions uh, for things that some of your experienced players might take for granted. Uh, we also get a lot of, uh, of repairs that I have to do on pistols because usually of, of very simple things. So I thought what we'd do is today is for all the, the newer guys out there, the less experienced players, or maybe some of your experienced players just looking for some additional advice on gas blowback pistols, I thought we'd just have a quick look uh, at pistols in general and um, some of the things you can do to keep them running well and, you know, generally things that you should or shouldn't do. So, let's get straight into it. Okay, well we're going to be looking at two pistols particularly. Um, that's a G18C series or a replica of a Glock, because they're very common on the Airsoft field. And also we have a WE1911MEU, because a lot of the things to do with, uh, with 1911s is transferable to high cappers as well. And what I find is, is these are two of the most common pistols you will see on the Airsoft field. So let's dive straight into it. The first thing that you need to know is whether your slide on your replica is metal. That makes a difference to the type of gas you would use. Now, if you have a, a TM or Tokyo Marui pistol, the vast, vast majority of those from new will be all plastic or polymer. Uh, TM themselves will recommend that you use duster gas in those, which is low power gas, it's not green gas. Um, to improve the longevity of the pistol. Now I don't have a lot of Tokyo Marui pistols and I am in by no way an expert on Tokyo Marui pistols. But what I have found is that they do perform well even if you just use them on the duster gas, which could be something such as Nuprol White, comes in a white tin, and uh, that's your duster gas, that's low power. Anything you see as low power gas will work fine in any standard Tokyo Marui pistol again i know there's going to be guys say here that they use tm pistols with green gas and never have a problem and and to be fair that probably is the case but i would not recommend to use red or black gas in a tokyo marui pistol or any pistol that has a plastic slide now that brings me on to gases in general before we get into the pistols you get different types of gas You'll have to excuse the sellotape on the top of my bottle of gas here. Let's keep the lid on when it was in transport for my games last week. Uh, but this is standard green gas. WE green gas. Uh, I buy this on site at my home site. Um, it's just standard green gas. You can get green gas at most sites, at most air shop stores, and certainly online. And to be fair, I only ever use green gas in my green gas pistols. I have experimented with red and black gas. 
I haven't used duster gas because I don't use TM stuff that often. Um, but duster gas would be available. It would be classified as low power gas. It will be advertised as such. Nuprol do white, uh, which is again low power gas. Specifically recommended for plastic slide pistols. So, with that out of the way, what is the difference between those gases? Well, if you get green gas, that's your standard gas. Red and black gas are basically higher pressure. So there's more pressure in the can. So when you put that in your magazine, it means your magazine's got higher pressure in it. And the logic between red and black gases is you'll get a stronger kick. You might get a little bit more FPS or power from the muzzle. And also, if you're in cold weather, such as myself, I play here in the Scottish Highlands. So in winter games, can get very cold and gas, green gas pistols are far less effective, same with gas blowback rifles, in cold weather. Um, so you can counteract that by using red or black gas. If you use red or black gas, the higher pressure, the idea being that the pressure loss due to the cold weather is counteracted by the higher pressure gas. I even have friends at Playersoft that use red and black gas exclusively and use it in the summer as well. Now I've experienced this myself, I've had problems with nozzles, I've had other breakages on pistols due to using higher power gas. If your pistol is well maintained and your seals are lubricated, then green gas should do you fine in the vast majority of circumstances. If it gets extremely cold in winter, I tend to use a non-blowback pistol such as my Mark 23 rather than using my blowbacks because everything suffers in cold weather grease gets thicker oils get thicker everything gets more brittle on plastics and things like that especially in freezing temperatures so personally i tend to avoid using my gas blowback pistols in extremely cold weather particularly when it's freezing on the ground and i certainly would normally recommend to stick to standard green gas if you want to use red or black gas, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. I know there's plenty of you guys out there who will use those and have no problems at all. But the only breakages I've suffered on any of my gas blowback pistols has been when I've been using red or black gas. So I would say for occasional usage in very cold weather, red or black gas is fine. But if you're in normal, moderate temperatures, I would stick with green gas, which will keep your pistol running longer. Then we have one other gas alternative, which is your 12 gram CO2 cartridges or CO2 powered pistols. Now you can get a lot of pistols which will have CO2 magazines available for them, but double check on your particular sidearm or glass gas blowback replica, whether it's rated to CO2, because just because you can buy a magazine that will take CO2 bulbs such as this one, it doesn't necessarily mean that the pistol can handle the CO2 pressure. CO2 is much higher pressure than green gas pistols. So if you have a pistol such as an ASG CZ Shadow 2, they're rated at CO2. You put a CO2 magazine in one of those, the kick is much stronger and the performance in winter is ultimately better. A CO2 pistol will power far through better in cold weather than a green gas pistol with less risk of breakage. Obviously you still have the issues of your greases and oils thickening up and plastics and such becoming more brittle in freezing temperatures. But generally CO2 will perform far better in the winter months, in the colder weather and generally at all times of year. However, just be aware that not all pistols are built to handle the rigors that CO2 will put on them because it's much higher pressure. So double check your replica, make sure it's capable of CO2 before you run CO2. So sticking with gas, if you are running CO2, put a dab of silicon oil on top of the CO2 canister before you put it in. I use RC shock oil. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can get some of this. Uh, it's much cheaper than buying purpose-made silicon oils and it is 100% silicon. The reason for doing that is twofold. You put a little bit of silicon oil on top of the CO2 bulb. It's going to help lubricate the O-ring where you, your CO2 bulb seals up. It's also going to put a little bit of that silicon oil into your nozzle, into your pistol, and lubricate all the other components in there because CO2... Whoever you buy it from will not include any silicon oil. It's a dry gas. 
and it will dry out your o-rings so lubrication is important but for gassing bit of a uh, bit of silicon oil on top of the bulb there and that will help with lubrication we'll get on to lubrication a bit more shortly and when you screw the bulb in screw it in until it hisses and then give it a little bit more of a turn until it stops hissing and that is you don't over tighten these into the magazine i have encountered issues where the fault has been that you cannot get this co2 bulb out worried about breaking it you end up having to prise it out or basically bash it out and i have seen that before it's not very common but it can happen so be careful when you're putting these in that you don't over tighten them okay so that's co2 out of the way now let's take a look at a magazine for green gas magazines i've got with me here is a 1911 magazine when you're filling with green gas one thing to remember let's take this tape off here and then we can get into the green gas one thing to remember with with a green gas canister before you fill the magazine give it a good shake give it a good shake because it is in its liquid state in there and also if the green gas canister is cold then the pressure inside the canister is going to be lower so it might be worth trying to warm the canister against your body or something like that before you start filling same with the magazine in cold weather try and get it warm so you can get as much gas as you can in there obviously if it's cold it's cold there's not much you can do um but that's that's a general rule is the warmer it is the better it's going to work <laughs> um when you're filling it i have seen people try to fill their green gas magazines this way don't try and fill them that way you need to invert the can so it's vertical hope you can make that out on camera insert the nozzle and then push down and you keep filling for around about 10 to 15 seconds the manufacturers will say now it might sound counterintuitive but one thing you can do is as you're filling hold the canister to your ear and you'll hear the gas pressures equalize you'll hear it making a kind of hiss as it goes in and then once the magazine is full the pressure between the magazine and the can is equal and that means that your magazine is full that way you're going to avoid putting too much pressure onto the seals of the magazine now we could get into details with gases about using propane gas and the like uh, i'm not going to go into that because i don't do it you can do it but you've got to be really careful again with your lubrication because that gas will be dry whereas green gas has silicon oil in it that's the only difference so it does include a bit of silicon oil so there you go that's how you fill a magazine then we get on to maintenance which is something that uh, isn't worth neglecting on these blowback pistols it helps them run smooth we'll stick with the magazine for for the first bit of maintenance now for maintenance on green on green gas gas blowback pistols and co2 pistols you're going to need silicon oil which we've already mentioned you are also going to need some silicon grease in some cases make sure that it is silicon because petroleum based oils and greases will eat away at plastics and rubbers uh, so it won't do your o-rings any good it won't do any plastics on the replica any good will make them brittle o-rings it'll eat away at them and make them brittle so they'll crack and fail sooner so ensure that you're only using silicon again i'll put a link in the description as to where you can get these from now on your magazines at the end of a day's airsoft or at the end of a game give it a clean off with a rag your magazine or a bit of workshop towel whatever you have handy give it a clean off in general so there's no dirt or water on it and then there are points you're going to want to lubricate you have a big rubber seal at the top here for where the gas is discharged you want to make sure that that's lubricated put a bit of oil around the rubber and rub it on so that that's not going to go dry you also have your knocker valve at the back here i like to put a bit of silicon oil around that so that that's lubricated it will hopefully soak in and then you also have your fill valve which again you're going to want to put a bit of this silicon oil on a common reason for these magazines failing is because the o-rings go dry now there are internal o-rings that you can't see that are inside here i have done a video on how to strip these magazines down and repair those o-rings if they do go brittle uh, so i'll put a link in the description as to where you can find that video if you haven't seen it already but hopefully this maintenance if you keep it regular should negate the need for you to do any remedial repairs like you know oiling up your o-rings greasing them up or, or what have you it should keep them working okay the other thing to remember is is to keep a little bit of gas in the magazine um wouldn't necessarily say you need to leave the magazine full 
It's not going to hurt if you leave it full of gas, um, but it certainly won't do it any good if you leave the magazine completely empty. The reason for that is if the magazine is completely empty, then those O-rings are going to go dry inside and you're going to end up with a leaky magazine. So there you go. Clean it all up. Bit of oil on the fill valve, the knocker valve, and on your exhaust port at the top there so that they don't go dry and make sure there's a bit of silicon oil on it. And that's it for your magazine. That's how you keep your magazines tip top and hopefully they won't leak on you. The next thing you're going to be looking at is the pistol itself. Now the reason I've picked these two pistols is because they're common. Uh, you do see a lot of them on the field which is good. So I thought we'd have a look at how you take these two pistols down. So first of all we'll have a look at the 1911. Hopefully you can make out on camera that you've got a notch here. This little notch on the slide and a notch here on your slide release. So what you want to do is line that up with that notch. Can you see how I've lined that up? Hopefully you can make that out. And then when you push from the reverse side here on the pin, that should allow you to remove the slide release. You take that to one side and then you push the entire assembly off. Be careful of the guide spring on these because it isn't always captive on 1911. And that is how you strip down the top slide from a 1911, which is really all you need to do for your basic maintenance on the pistol. If you happen to have a G-Series pistol, you will notice that there are tabs on either side, and that is it. So all you do is, is you get hold of the two tabs with your thumb and forefinger like so, you need to rack the slide back, pull the tabs down, which is tricky, and then with these, sometimes if you don't get the tab right, you have to give it a bit of force, push it forward with the tabs held down. And again, the slide should slide right off. The guide spring in these is usually captive, so you don't need to worry about it going flying. And that is how you would take down a G-Series pistol. To put the G-Series pistol back together, because we'll look at the 1911, you simply put the slide back on, you don't need to do anything else, just rack it back, and that is you. That's how you take the slide off the G-Series pistol. Okay, so lubrication-wise, as you can see, this one's been cleaned and lubricated. Basically, for anywhere where you have metal or metal contact, as you can see, it's rubbed paint away on mine, but I've had this for, for quite some time. It's seen a lot of use. When you start working on one of these, then basically you want to put a dab of silicon oil into your trigger mechanism. Any moving parts want a small dab of silicon oil, less is more. Before you oil any of the components though, give them a clean with the rag, give them a wipe down. I did a video on how to clean up these things and maintain them, but I can't stress enough how important it is to do this general maintenance and to keep everything running smooth. If you don't, then eventually you're going to run into problems and things will wear out. So if we're putting the 1911 back together, take spring guide and spring if they've come out and rest them against the hop-up unit like so. You then take your slide, your entire assembly, put it back on the pistol, slide it back. Don't let go because <laughs> it's not captive. If you see the little notch there that we mentioned earlier, you line that up with that gap, you take your release pin and then just pop it through and then when you let go it'll lock back and that is you lovely and working again obviously when you do any of this maintenance make sure there's no magazine in the replica when you're not using the replica and it's storage i would recommend to take the magazines out completely and don't have them in the replica that way you're not risking any gas leaks or anything like that it shouldn't do but you never know and in general, clean up the outside of the pistol as well, such as this pistol is all metal. So you want to keep the outside as clean as you can. I mean, obviously they're going to get scratched up in use, but if you can keep them clean, they'll run a lot better for you. If you drop the pistol, check for breakages. Try not to drop them. They're not as strong as a real firearm. So obviously if you drop them, there is a risk of them breaking and you don't want that. So that's it. Tips, tricks for owning one of these keep everything clean, keep everything lubricated. Those are the correct methods for removing the slides. Unless you're doing upgrades as a new player, you know, get used to the replica you have, but you really don't need to take down any more 
than I've showed you there. That's all you need to take down. One thing worth pointing out, which I can show you on this one, is that your hop-up adjustment wheel on most WE style replicas anyway, will be here. And you turn that wheel to adjust your hop. So get used to taking the slide off because you will have to do that to change the hop. Not all pistols will you have to do that, but the vast majority of them you do. And with any new pistol, when you've just got it, the lubrication that the manufacturers put on the pistols is normally very poor. So clean them up because there might be metal filings and all sorts in there from the machining process, but give them a good clean up, clean them up where I've shown you there, where moving parts are touching, and then re-lubricate with silicon oil, and that way your pistol's gonna last you far, far longer. Get used to the gas, the different types of gas. If you have a CO2 pistol, then get used to lubricating it after every game. Give it a clean and a lubricate after every game and then that way it's going to last you much longer. Okay guys, well there we go. That's some basic tips on the very basics of these gas blowback pistols. Get used to taking your slide off, get used to cleaning them up and lubricating them. That's very important and get to grips with the gas, the different gas that we've mentioned and be happy in your choice and know what the differences could mean for you and your sidearm. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I hope it's been informative. I hope you found it useful. If you have any other questions about gas blowback pistols or about airsoft in general, then do drop me a comment below. I will always respond to a comment. Might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like on it. And if you're enjoying my series of videos, then please do subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss any of my uploads. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.